Hello again and welcome to the next episode of what Inset is now calling the world's most reliable Lamborghini. To be honest, this build has gathered a lot more attention than I initially thought it would. There was even an article written about it on the drive. So thank you for all the interest and the feedback and the comments you've given thus far on the videos as well as the project in general. Now, if you're just joining us, I'll give you a one sentence explanation of exactly what's happening here. We have a Lamborghini Countach replica that is getting a Toyota 5 litre V12 engine installed inside of it. I wish it was as simple to do as a Sensen sounded, but well, I guess that's project car life. Anyway, today we're going to discuss the style of the show a little bit more, the engine. Essentially, what's been done to it already and what we can still do to it. Now, before we head upstairs and look at the engine, uh, we're just going to stay down here for a bit with the car and do some very quick maths in the form of some power to weight calculations. I thought it would be best to give you guys a better idea of the power figures we need to match or exceed the real car. So keep these in mind when watching the rest of the video if you want to give some suggestions. Now I'm going to use my phone calculator here, but I'll put some better figures on the screen starting now. So the new engine going in makes 206 kilowatts, according to Toyota. However, tests have shown that figure is probably closer to 220 kilowatts, so let's use that instead. According to the paperwork of the replica, it weighs 1,180 kilograms, and that's a wet weight, so that includes all the fluids, all the petrol, etc. Now, obviously, this weight is subject to change a bit with the new engine, but for these purposes, we're just going to go with that original weight. Therefore, if we put those figures on here, that gives us a power to weight ratio of 0.18 kilowatts per kilogram. Now, that's with the stock engine, obviously. Now, if we look at the genuine Contage 5000 QV, the European carbureted versions were rated at 335 kilowatts. It weighs substantially more. It's actually 1,480 kilograms, 300 kilograms more to be exact. So if we put those figures back in here, that gives us a power to weight ratio of 0.22 kilowatts per kilogram. So in order to get this replica up to a similar power to weight ratio to a genuine one, we need to get our engine up from 220 kilowatts to let's see here, uh, let's say 270 kilowatts, uh, meaning we need to get at least an extra 50 kilowatts somewhere in the engine. And we want to do that while keeping the engine naturally aspirated. All right, maths lesson complete. Let's go look at the actual engine. All right, now you join me upstairs with the engine, as well as a light that I've balanced on what are actually the fuel tanks, just for some extra ambience. Now, I've already done a brief introduction to this exact engine and the history behind it. So, if you're interested in hearing more about that, it's in a previous video. But a quick overview. This is a Toyota 1GZFE, which is a 5-litre, 48-valve, quad-cam V12 from a JDM Toyota Century. Now, as mentioned, this engine had already been dismantled quite a bit. But for the purposes of getting everyone on the same page, I've stacked the parts we've removed back on top of the engine like a very bad Tetris game. So let's get started from the top and work our way down before anything falls off. So firstly, right on top of the engine, we have the original ECUs. That's right, ECUs, plural. This engine runs off two ECUs for controlling the left and right banks of the engine. Also, fun fact, the angle between the banks is 60 degrees, the more you know. Now we are going to be changing the ECU. We've had suggestions ranging from Holtec to Link to ECU Master. We haven't decided on one yet, but if you want to vouch for an ECU that you think will work, comments are open down below. Next up on the removed list was the entire intake system, which starts over here, then runs up over here, and then leads down over here and feeds the engine. Also, for reasons unknown, these had Lexus V12 written on them. I've rubbed it out over there. I don't actually know why the person who sold this engine thought it was a Lexus engine. But to cut a long story short, all this needs to be reworked. Do we keep some of the stock system and just modify it or replace all of this with an RTB setup? RTB has also been suggested in the comments a few times, and while I would love that, it does add an extra factor into this build as well as cost. Now I have seen a few amazing pre-made setups, however the majority of them cost nearly as much as we paid for the entire car. So we are still investigating a solution here. So since we don't have x-ray vision, we can't see inside the engine from this point. But what I can tell you is that we have done a compression test on all 12 cylinders and they are good to go. If I remember correctly, the pistons are aluminium alloy and the conrods are made of forged steel. 
So in stock form, the pistons give a compression ratio of 10.5 to 1. However, I have seen aftermarket manufacturers that can make pistons with a ratio all the way up to 13 to 1. Now, fun story about this, which is the radiator inlet. Now this engine didn't come with a radiator attached. Not that it matters, because it wouldn't work for how we need it anyway. The Kuntosh has two radiators, one on each side of the car. I've shown you where they go in a previous walk around video. We do have the radiators that came with the car. Uh, here's one of them. However, we are considering getting new ones made up. And we will also need to make a fair bit of custom piping to connect them. Now, this is where the fun starts. On the previous setup that came with this car, the radiator plumbing was actually somehow formed part of the overall structure of the car, which was a bit weird to say the least. Now, if you don't know what I mean, here's a photo to explain more. Normal radiator pipe into a circular steel pipe into a rectangular steel pipe that was welded to the chassis with a nice 90 degree bend along the way. Yeah, I've never seen that before. So moving around to the side of the engine, we have already removed the exhaust heat shields and exhaust manifolds. I don't know where the other heat shields ended up, but probably in the bin somewhere. But here's a stock manifold to look at. Now we're not keeping these stock ones and have a very disgusting exhaust setup that will make this V12 sing. So we are thinking six into one headers on each side, which both feed into an X pipe and then back to two pipes out the rear with quad exhaust tips. Also, with this technically being a mid engine car, the overall exhaust setup will be quite short. So since we're near the bottom of the engine, we may as well mention the crankshaft, which is somewhere inside here behind this pulley. It's made from forged steel and probably good for way more power than we'd ever want in the car. So that's staying. Now right at the bottom of the engine, we have the oil sump. So this sump is made of steel and this engine takes eight liters of oil. Now 5W30 is recommended by Toyota. We don't think the sump will get in the way of our install. So for the time being, it's staying in place. Also speaking of oil, this oil filter is enormous. It's apparently shared with an old Land Cruiser. Now this is obviously an item you consider part of a normal service. So we're gonna be putting a new one on. I found it online for this exact car for $24, along with the V-bolt that fits on the front of the engine here for $8, so no issues there. So what are the next steps for this engine? Right now, we aren't doing anything more with it because it's going off soon to get an adapter plate made to fit the Audi gearbox, which is right over here. However, I wanted to make this video before it goes off so we can get the ball rolling on some ideas. And I also realize there is a lot I have left out, such as the entire fuel system. Even big injectors would be a good way to get more power out of this thing. So anyway, that's where we currently are with the engine. Now, if you've made it this far, then thanks for watching and drop some suggestions down below for what we can do to make this engine better. Now, hopefully the adapter paint won't take too long to make and then we'll be back with the engine. However, there's still plenty of other work to do until then. So just wait until you see the chassis. But I'll see you in the next video.